What's up, Mr. Barnes here. This is my second video. I've tried to make it like five times and I keep messing up, but hopefully this one will work. This video is on defining globalization. This is episode one of the video blog for the Global Interactions Unit. All right, I'm gonna try and keep it as short as I possibly can. This video is on defining globalization and the IB has a definition of globalization that they want you to know. It's here in the IB syllabus. It's also in my notes, which I'll have in the comments as a link. And their definition is the growing interdependence of countries worldwide through the increasing volume and variety of cross-border transactions and goods and services and of international capital flows and through the more rapid and widespread diffusion of technology. Okay, so that's pretty complicated. It's from the IMF. It's pretty complicated. I'm going to try to break it down throughout these videos uh, and hopefully you'll have a better understanding of what globalization is. But for me, I think the best way to break it down is to think about what globalization means to me. And the first thing that comes to my mind is FaceTime because FaceTime or Skype, for example, or even social media is absolutely mind blowing to me because it's amazing that I can have real-time conversations looking at my friends and family in a video chat and it's as clear as can be and it's free. Well, if I have internet, it's free. And if I have the device, it's free. Uh, I think that that's absolutely phenomenal. I think it's, it's mind-boggling and it, it blows my mind every single time that I, that I talk on FaceTime or I talk on Skype. Uh, I can't get over how impressive this is because I have lived without this technology. Now, it might be hard for the generation that's going to be taking this exam, you guys that are taking this exam, to understand, but for me, it's just, that's exactly the thing that I go to when I think of globalization because it's, it's bringing people closer together. It's, it's bringing people more connected. It's shrinking the world. Uh, the next thing I think about is transport. I have here uh, the world's largest container ship. This thing holds 20,000 containers. As of August 2015, it's the world's largest. Um, they're constantly breaking these records and making ships larger. In fact, the ships are getting so large now that they're creating, uh, they're having to re restructure certain canals and certain ports to be able to fit these ships because they're, they're so massive. And so this is the MSC Oscar, one of the largest ships in the world. And I just think that transport and transportation is obviously a major aspect of globalization, so I go straight to that as well. And then lastly, TNCs. Because if we look at, you know, the, let's see, right here, it says the international capital flows. TNCs are arguably the architects of globalization, people say. They sort of create the blueprint for how globalization works, and they kind of dictate how globalization should work. And so I think, you know, there's corporations all over the world, and that's, what my mind initially goes to when I think of globalization. But what can globalization be really? I got these three parts, A, B, and C for number three here from a, a blog post that someone posted a while back, I can't remember where it was, where it was from, but um, this issues-based approach is the approach that we're gonna use because we're gonna look at globalization using the um, IB style which is using these issues of economic interactions, environmental change, sociocultural exchanges, political outcomes, and globalization at the local level. So we're gonna, I'm gonna make these videos based on this, uh, this issues-based approach, but at the same time, like I'm doing today with the idea of globalization, I'm gonna use concepts as well in my, in my videos too to hit on sort of more specific details. Okay, I'm not going to really look at it from a historical approach. If you want to read about globalization, there is an insane amount of information out there if you're really interested in this stuff. Someone that I would particularly suggest is Joseph Stiglitz. He writes um, some pretty interesting things on you know, pro versus anti-globalization movements and so on and so forth. Okay, um, Here's a good question. What is the difference between globalization and global interactions? Because the unit is titled global interactions, but I'm using the word globalization. Here's the difference. The study of global interactions in this syllabus, because this comes straight from the IB, has a broader perspective than a more conventional study of globalization that emphasizes a linear process involving the domination and imposition of Western culture on the world. 
In the context of this syllabus, global interaction suggests a two-way and complex process whereby cultural traits and commodities may be adopted, adapted, or resisted by societies. I mentioned that transnational corporations were such a huge part of globalization, and that's why I think a lot of people are disenchanted with globalization in the first place because they don't want these large corporations running the show because if they have too much power, then that's not a good thing. And so I, I have here the, the list of largest companies by revenue. Um, Walmart at the top, I mean, you've got oil and gas companies all taking up the top 10 mostly, and then, um, yeah, top 20 even further down, automobile companies, so on and so forth. So um, some people might not like that these companies have so much power, and as a result, they're not, they're not happy with it, and that is how globalization has oftentimes been viewed. In the case of IB Geography, we're looking at global interactions as sort of a two-way street, whereby some countries who may not have as much power can still partake in globalization and have some freedom to choose what they want to, to you know, either accept or reject. France is a classic example of this where they, you know, reject certain English words in their vocabulary, but at the same time, I was just uh, riding in my car a couple of days ago when I heard, um, uh, I was listening to a rock station, and it's American music. It's American and British, you know, rock music. And the DJ's loving it, and he's speaking French. I don't know what he's saying in French, but I, I can understand the, the rock music, so I listen to it. So, you know, they accept certain parts of, of global uh, interactions, and that's, uh, that's why the IB wants you to study it, because it's, it's a more broader perspective than a, you know, narrow sort of Western-focused view of globalization. Another example here, I, I like this one. Um, I was listening to NPR over Christmas break, and they were talking about how Kentucky Fried Chicken is such a huge hit in Japan over Christmas. Like, a lot of Japanese people, I guess, go out and get K Kentucky Fried Chicken as their, as their Christmas dinner. It started with some people that, you know, I think it was Americans that were there originally. And then they, uh, it became popular because they couldn't find chicken and then, or excuse me, because they couldn't find turkey to have turkey dinner. And then, you know... What do you know? Kentucky Fried Chicken becomes super popular for the Japanese as well. They've accepted this part of, of uh, American culture. And so globalization um, is a two-way street, or excuse me, in this case, global interactions is more of a two-way street than, than globalization has been. Uh, and the last thing, I might as well talk about it because it's right here. There are anti-globalization movements as well. This is an article from the Moscow Times about you know, Russia's uh, government supporting anti-globalist movements around the world because of their uh, distrust for, let's say, Western corporations or Western society in some respects. And so, again, two-way street, we're looking at not just globalization, but global interactions, the adoption, adaption, or resistance by some societies, okay? So memorize this definition by the IMF. Hopefully it helps you a little bit, but think about it in the context of what globalization means to you. And I think that that will help the most. Okay, stay around, stick around for my next video.